This is the DMT One to One Show, episode 18, on the 18th of July 2013, an interview with Mixcloud. It's great to be here on the DMT One to One Show, and this week we have uh, Nico Perez, uh, a co founder of the company Mixcloud. So, hi, Nico, and great to have you back on the show. How's it going? Very good. Thank you very much for having me. It's great to have you. And so, uh, we haven't spoken in a, in a while actually on the show, I think. Uh, it's been six months. At least, yeah, uh, yeah. We had an update at Christmas, actually, a, quick, a, a really quick one with a few other companies, but not properly for at least a, a year, year and a half. And so, a lot has happened at Mixcloud uh, in the last few months, especially in the last like two months, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've myself seen the traffic really grow on uh, digital music trends uh, for the show itself. And so, like, uh, tell me what the latest developments have been. And uh, first of all, started with mobile, I guess. Yeah. So for us, this year has really all been about mobile. Uh, we've been putting a lot of focus and a lot of efforts into it, both in terms of uh, development and in terms of you know marketing and outreach, things like that. Uh, so first up, we had the iPhone app that we built. Um, we actually had an original iPhone app that we built about two and a bit years ago, um, but it, it, it lacked a lot of love. It needed refreshing. And so we put a lot of time and effort into making you know, what we felt was one of the best apps out there for, uh, for listening. And um, we were pretty pleased to see that Apple thought the same. They featured it. Um, and so we saw a lot of downloads off the back of that. And we saw a lot of new users. Um, and as you mentioned, you know, part of that rollout was incorporating a new on-ramp for new users. And so we helped guide them through some of the categories that we have on the site. Um, so, uh, for example, you know, your show was featured in the business category. There was a bunch of other shows that were featured. And that really helped people find sort of what they were interested in when they first opened up the app. Yeah. So that helped with onboarding. And then, you know, we had the mobile web, also a uh, mobile website launch as well. And uh, Android is coming soon. So we're excited about that. Yeah, sure. And so, and that's actually a very interesting process, I think, for the listeners as well to think about uh, having an app out there that is uh, it's probably doing pretty well, but it's not doing as well as maybe you, you were hoping or is not. Uh, it doesn't look like you were hoping. And then going back to the drawing board and thinking, how are we going to create the best app that we can possibly create for the service? So how was that process and, and where did it start? You know, did you have a, a list of features or, or behaviors that you wanted to incorporate within the app? Yeah, so we started from you know the very beginning of the drawing board. Our basic premise and our sketch was, you know, how do we make this app as simple as possible for somebody who knows nothing about Mixcloud is coming to it for the very first time and just really maybe doesn't even know where to start. Yeah. And so the focus has been really on, you know, um, allowing people to pick a, a couple of categories that they're interested in. We present them with a few options of people who that we recommend that they follow. And then in the end, we do something really cool. We do something really nifty where we, um, we scan your iTunes library and then we figure out which Cloudcast on Mixcloud is most relevant to what you've listened to. Nice. So that is really cool. So we look at what you've been listening to and we say, you know, okay, this person's really interested in, you know, Ital Italo disco or this person loves funk or this person, you know, has just been listening to a lot of reggae. And then we cross reference that with what we have. Yeah. And so the whole idea is that you come onto the service, you hit play on the first thing and you enjoy it. Yeah. And of course that, that's interesting because uh, it requires also big, uh, big work in, in categorization from, from your end on, on what's, what's on the side. So how do you find people using the service uh, are behaving as far as when they, uh, when they upload their own shows or you know, DJs or radios? Are, are they good with metadata or do you have to help them out on the front? We always try and encourage as much metadata input as possible because at the end of the day, the more metadata that you input as an uploader, the more likely it is somebody will find your show or your, your remix. Um, but you know, our challenge, and I think this is a challenge of a lot of user-generated sites, is that we have this incredibly long tail of tags, of user-generated tags. Um, and at the moment, we have a few editorial categories. Uh, and our challenge now, and something we're actually working on in the next design, is how do we merge these? How do we overlap them and take the best bits of editorial categories, you know, the ability to feature and pick certain people, along with the scalability of having an free, open free tagging system. Um, because obviously, you know, there's hundreds of different types of genres of music and audio and comedy out there. Um, so we've got a couple of ideas in that, in that area. Um, it's going to hopefully be coming out in the next version of the, the main desktop site. So stay tuned for that. 
that's awesome. I'm looking at uh, the dispersion of the the, the service in on, on different devices. Of course, uh, uh, I'm sure that uh, Android is is a big. Uh, uh, point for you to to get uh, this great uh, improvement on the app out there as well and and uh, also mobile uh, uh, sorry tv as well is also mm -hmm. a, a big category because people are are getting connected through smart tvs and that may be another another springboard to get more users to join the service so first of all let's talk about android what, what are the plans on that front and uh, uh, where are you right now yeah so android you know um, again, we have an existing app that's out there. Uh, we built it about two years ago. It's very ba basic, bare bones functionality. Um, we're in the process of working on the new version. Um, if you actually uh, look on Google Plus, there's a group, a beta tester group, and I think hopefully next week or at least within the month, we're going to be releasing the first beta version. Awesome. Um, so that's pretty exciting. That's going to be coming soon. As soon as we iron out any bugs that we have there, then we're looking to release the live in you know maybe six to eight weeks, that sort of time frame. Uh, with regards to television, you know, it's still, I feel like it's still quite a nascent area, nascent market. You know, there's, we're seeing more and more connected TVs come about, but it's, uh, it's something that, you know, we're going to be looking at in the future, but for now, the focus is mobile. And, and the problem is that, uh, like we've talked a few times on the show, is that uh, most of these TVs operate in a proprietary operating system as well, and there's very few TVs that are, for example, HTML5 compatible or where you can import your own application. So hopefully, if we see more manufacturers understand that, especially small, smaller developers or small companies can't do 15 different versions for 15 different manufacturers, they're going to start realizing that they have to adopt uh, some sort of standard so that uh, somebody like yourselves can develop one one app that then works across across devices. Yeah, I mean, it's it's you know already with two or three operating systems, it's a challenge enough for a small company. So it's it's absolutely impossible that you know we would develop apps for 10, 12, 15 platforms. It's, yeah. it's really a question of you know, picking the sort of two or three top platforms and trying to do something good for them. Yeah. Yeah, sure. And uh, looking at the internet radio space, the UK is, in a way, it's behind in this, the compared to, of course, a market like the United States, where you have huge companies, established companies like Pandora, iHeartRadio, and, and now you have Songs out that is, uh, is, uh, is growing a lot. And, uh, uh, and in the UK, that market is kind of lagging. You know, a lot of people listen to radio online. The BBC Radio app is doing really well, and uh, and you guys are doing well as, as well. But there isn't like that this huge ecosystem. So, uh, is there a particular reason for that? And and do you, do you feel like you guys are, are are pretty well placed to 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 be that that uh, person that is filling the gap in between mm -hmm. traditional radio and and on demand, of course. Yeah, I mean, that that really is the core of Nextcloud. That's what we want to be about. We want to be taking this, this traditional analog FM format and moving it into the digital age yeah. for the people who are on Facebook and Twitter every day. You know, that's, that's our thesis. Um, as to why the UK is lagged, lagging a little bit, I think two main reasons. One is just the size of the market. You know, we don't have a, a large enough market here to build, you know, huge clear channels type companies. Yeah. Um, and then the other one is just the fact that the BBC is such a strong player, such a good service that, you know, it's hard to compete with the iPlayer. There's been some developments in that space. You know, um, the UK radio player was a joint effort between BBC and a lot of the commercial radio stations out there. Um, we were sort of involved in, in some of the metadata side of that as well. So um, I think it's slowly but surely progressing to the digital age. Um, it, it's just a question of people um, understanding and changing their mindset and realizing that radio doesn't necessarily mean just over FM in your car. It could be, you know, digital. Yeah. And you have a, a large user base in the United States as well. Uh, do, you, do you find like, do you, do you have hotspots, for example, of people maybe talking about the app on specific cities or is it just random? No, it's, I mean, it's, it's kind of what you would expect from uh, a country like America. It's the large metropolitan areas. So New York is our number one city, followed by LA, followed by San Francisco. You know, it's kind of what, what you would guess. Yeah. And on that front, are plans on expanding over there as well? Yeah, definitely. So America's 
uh, on our radar for this year, and it's something that you know we've been uh, gearing up to for a while. Um, we're actually looking to bring on somebody in the brand partnership space out there. So right. if there's any viewers out there who uh, or listeners who are working in the brand partnership space in preferably New York, but you know we're looking across the states, then please get in touch. Um, and yeah, it's a question of you know having somebody on the ground there who can do some deals, uh, potentially work on the outreach side, and literally just you know having some feet on the ground because up till now you know we've been sort of based in London and 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 you know sort of headquartered in London, but we'd like to expand that. Yeah, yeah sure. And uh, you know I've always. Uh had a, a, loads of respect for Mick Cloud in the sense that you know you've always been, you know you started out bootstrapped essentially, you never took a, a, lot, a lot of funding on, and so uh, you know do, do you plan? Do you think that with the changing needs of the company that may change, or do, do, do you feel like that's your philosophy? You're going to stick with it? Yeah, actually, it's a discussion we're having right now because we we have reached this point with the mobile growth, and you know we've seen things are getting stronger and the, the community is growing. So we've reached this kind of question mark in this point where we are co actually considering raising some funds and t taking it up a gear, um, especially if we're, we're looking at American expansion. Um, so that's something we're looking at. We're also, you know, there's actually been some people talking to us about um, mergers, acquisitions sort of space. So um, that's something we're considering as well. Uh, Safe to say, I can't say too much, but oh, okay. it's, it's quite an exciting time for us right now. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. And, I, and I think because you've kept the business your own, then you have a lot more options than if you hadn't. So exactly. So I, th I think that's something that we're we're really proud that we've taken it this far by ourselves. Um, but you know, we, we we see the potential in Mixcloud as, as 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 much bigger. We see you know the internet radio space is just starting out. Things are sort of you know, still in the early days. Um, so we, we, we think that we can take it a lot bigger. So yeah. we're quite excited about that. That's awesome. And it's also like, I guess it's, it's a good, uh, uh, something to, to, to end with for uh, people that are looking at starting their own company because, you know, we're reading headlines every day about companies raising, raising ridiculous amount of money, but that's not necessarily watching every single business needs. And, you know, I remember having a meeting with you, yeah. uh, well, uh, proud Camden, mm. like uh, at a bar, like four years ago when we were just starting out, yeah. and and look at where you guys are now. So, you know, it's it's not. It's, I think it, it's business to business, and it's yeah. a decision that every entrepreneur has to make. But it's not necess mandatory that somebody has to go and look for like two million dollars, three million dollars in order to build a company. Exactly, and I think you know the the, the important thing for us has always been passion, yeah. and we're passionate about what we're doing. We love what we're doing, uh, and so it's not really about the money, whether we make millions or anything like that, it's, it's, it's a genuine passion for what we're doing. Um, and then the other thing I just add, end on is, uh, you know, somebody told me very early on in the early days when we started, when we were trying to raise money, um, he said, you know, actually a couple of guys or girls in a, in a room with a good Wi-Fi connection, you know, you can go pretty far with just that. So I would recommend everybody to... I really highly recommend starting a business. It's been one of the most um, informative and interesting things I've ever done. And so I would recommend everybody to go out there and you know try and try and make something happen. That's great. Well, thanks so much for your time and go and check out mixcloud.com. And uh, if you're on a mobile device while you're listening to the show, uh, grab it right now and uh, look for Mixcloud on your uh, phone. And hopefully in a few weeks you'll be able to get the new and improved. Uh, Android app, but in the meantime, you can get the old one, and then when the new one comes out, it's going to get updated. So do it anyway. Uh, thanks so much for listening, and thanks, Nick, for joining me. Thank you very much for having me. Great. Have a great week, and until next time. If you enjoyed the show, remember to check out our weekly music tech news show on digitalmusictrends.com.